Welcome to the Toronto Landmark Story Series, brought to you by freeconference.com and Dundurn Press. We hope you enjoy your experience as you settle in and listen to the passage, Yorkville, from Toronto Lost Villages, written and narrated by Ron Brown. For many years, Yorkville remained a country settlement, well north of York. South of Yorkville, Young Street was little more than a swamp, and settlers traveling to York had to detour to the east, following a road known simply as the road to Young Street. In any event, the Young Street survey stopped at Lot Street, today's Queen, south of which was private land. This led to the laying out of Toronto Street, a short distance east, for travelers en route to Toronto to follow, part of which exists today. Yorkville began around a toll gate, Toll gates more often than not became the occasion for taverns, and taverns for towns. Yorkville fit this pattern. The toll gate appeared around 1796. Within a dozen years, Daniel Tears had opened the Red Lion Inn on the east side of Young Street, just north of today's Bluer. A small stream a short distance to the northeast, known as Severance Creek, contained enough flow of water to power industry. The first to locate there was a brewery erected by Joseph Bluer in 1830, which stood beside today's Rosedale Valley Road, west of the Sherburne Street Bridge. A few years later, closer to Young Street, John Severn added a second brewery. Along with industry came the land speculation, and William Jarvis, after whom Jarvis Street is named, was one. On land northwest of the corner of Young and the first concession, which is Bluer Street, Jarvis laid out Yorkville. Development, however, remained slow. For working class residents, Yorkville was too far from the factories that were heavily concentrating along the lake. In 1849, omnibus service made commuting easier and Yorkville began to grow. In 1852, a thousand petitioners asked for village status, although far fewer than that actually lived there. A nearby cemetery, it is speculated, contributed heavily to the petition. Nevertheless, Yorkville officially became a village and its shops concentrated largely on Young Street. Although its village streets had not yet stretched as far west as today's Avenue Road or north to Davenport, nor had Bay Street been extended through the town site at that time. One of the first acts of the new council was to create a coat of arms. The next to commission the building of a town hall. Completed in 1860, the hall stood on Young opposite today's Collier Street and it was constructed of stone from Credit Valley quarries. Its tower remained a Young Street landmark for many decades. The hall was gutted by fire in 1941 and demolished the following year. The coat of arms, however, was rescued and is displayed to this day on the tower of the Yorkville Fire Hall. Now the most prominent of Old Yorkville's landmarks, the Fire Tower, built in 1876, still stands on Yorkville Avenue, half a block west of Young Street. The main fire hall, however, was replaced in 1889. By 1881, Toronto's urban fringe was closing in on Yorkville, which by then had boomed to about 5,000 residents and extended north up Young to almost the Summerhill area. But east of Young, another subdivision was slower to develop. Its name was Rosedale. Finally, in 1883, Toronto annexed the area, providing the residents with much needed municipal services, and Yorkville was swallowed up in a surge of urban growth. New services appeared, sidewalks and paved streets, an electric street railway service, and Bay Street was extended north from Bloor to Davenport. Vacant lots quickly filled, and yet more subdivisions appeared. Yorkville remained a quiet residential neighborhood until the 1960s when the first of the coffee houses began to appear. With names like the Chat Noir, the Mina Bird, and the River Boat, they attracted budding young folk singers with names like Gordon Lightfoot, Catherine McKinnon, and Arlo Guthrie. Inevitably, the area began to attract the curious, and soon the neighborhood evolved into one of the Toronto area's more upscale shopping districts, frequented by visiting Hollywood stars, and likened by some to Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive. Although many of the old houses along both Yorkville Avenue and Cumberland Street have been altered or replaced, some still stand among the new and renewed. Although nothing of that period remains on Young Street, number 77 Yorkville, the town's oldest, 
was built in 1867 for Constable John Daniels, with cells located behind the building. Number 100 Yorkville was built in 1881, but was best known for the role it served from 1922 to 1952 as the original Mount Sinai Hospital. Today the facade remains, footing a glass condo building and housing an upscale luxury goods store. In a way, Yorkville still serves as a role, much like that of its earlier days. Then it was an oasis, a country village far from the maddening crowd. Well, the crowds have arrived. But Yorkville's pedestrian-scale streetscape and its attempts at heritage preservation have kept it a refuge within what is often an overpowering and impersonal urban environment. We hope you enjoyed learning about the Yorkville area. To find Ron Brown's Toronto Lost Villages, visit dundurn.com or your nearest bookstore. Thank you.